reason that we are seeing this a constant, relentless assault against this president is because he is not one of them. He is not part of the system. He represents America, putting America and Americans first. And for that crime, the system has never stopped trying to remove this man from the political scene. He represents an existential threat to the entire globalist, elitist ruling class and all of their wingmen in the press and then big tech and the deep state and everywhere else. And he gravely threatens their absolute grip on power. Therefore, he must be destroyed. So this latest indictment is a serious one. It is at the federal level. Um, it does pose a more serious perhaps legal challenges for him than the other indictments already do or will. Um, so we have to take it very seriously, but you have to understand it really does not have anything to do with regard to, to what the president has done here with regard to documents. And it has everything to do with stopping this man uh, from running and winning the presidency once again. Uh, thank you, Monica. Let me go to you, uh, Mark, there in New York. You've been with President Trump. Uh, his spirits seem high. Uh, you know, do you believe, and I'm, uh, I, can he really come back from all of these indictments? Well, Pastor Gene, again, thank you so much for having me. Again, here live in New York City from Trump Towers down here in Manhattan. And the Trump family, the Trump team, they love Flash Point. Let me just say that. Absolutely, 100%. Um, President Donald Trump uh, most definitely is coming back from uh, this latest Gestapo attack from uh, the Joe Biden um, injustice uh, uh, department. I mean, again, I was just with them a couple of days ago uh, here in, in, in Bet, Bet Minister, New Jersey. The atmosphere is electric. The atmosphere was amazing. He is strong, He's stronger than ever. I mean, because, again, they're coming after him because they're trying to come after us. And he made it very clear in his speech. He is the only thing that, that, that I believe God is using for such a time as this to stand in the gap uh, to fight for the free thinking, free loving Americans. But, but Gene, the real question is uh, the, the, the unprecedented um, happening of a sitting president um, that is actively trying to jail the leading candidate um, for the Republican nomination. Um, th this is this is like some third world country. Uh, it is a sad day for democracy, but the American people aren't fooled by it. Most people we talk to, their their first thoughts are, well, what if he's indicted on one? Does that mean he can't run? Yeah. So actually, he can run technically, but I agree with what Mark said and what Monica said. Monica said it really well. You have to take this federal one different. I agree with her that there's going to be Georgia, probably a D.C. Right. one, maybe New Jersey. Uh, but this one's pretty serious. And so there's kind of two ways to look at it. Politically, it's helped him, especially in the Republican primary. He's just going to surge for this because people see that more and more and more the failure to go after Biden over these uh, bribery schemes, but then they're going after Trump. But let me say something from a legal standpoint that most people aren't dealing with. The real battle here at the court level, politically, it's going to help him. But at the legal, I agree with Monica. This You have to take this seriously because there's some troubling things here. You know, the fact that he is outside the system horrifies them. The fact that he does not want to protect the system horrifies them. When you have people on the right and the left in the swamp going after him, that tells you a lot because th they know that he is intent now on taking them out and cleaning it up even more than he was before. So they are afraid of him. I've never seen a human being. I've never seen anyone in government that these forces fear as much as they fear Donald Trump. That should be, that should tell us everything we need to know. When people that, that who are as corrupt as these people are, the whole nation now knows they are, they lie, they steal, they frame, the, the, everyone, the, the nation is awakening, as Mark says, and, and yet they continue to do it and the nation is waking up to it. And because this, this left and these progressives fear him like no one I've ever seen. But let me play this. And I'm going to go back to uh, Monica Crowley about Trump saying he was right. Watch. Remember, they impeached me for asking a simple question about Biden's corrupt dealings in Ukraine. And now they see that once again, I was right. I was right. I was totally right. He was right, Monica. 
<laughs> you know, there's a, a very well-known meme out there, Gene, that says Trump was right about everything. <laughs> and it's certainly turning out to be the case, isn't it? Um, his points here are absolutely right on. They have indicted and and uh, prosecuted and impeached John, Donald Trump for literally everything that they have done, all of their crimes. We now know that the Biden crime family was deeply in bed with a Russian oligarch. We now know that uh, the Ukrainian corruption has redounded to the Biden family benefit by now uh, Chairman Comer is talking about 20 to $30 million flowing into the Biden family from the corrupt Ukrainian uh, regime and those players at Burisma and elsewhere, they've literally gone after Trump for every single crime that they themselves have committed. So they are masters of projection, accusing Donald Trump and our side more generally of everything that they themselves are guilty of. Donald Trump just is simply there pointing it out, asking for honest investigations into their actual corruption. And that's yet another reason why he needs to be stopped. Again, he's an existential threat to all of them. And we haven't really seen this on the scale since my first boss, former President Richard Nixon, who was also run out of office because he wanted to reform the executive branch. You know, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who was a Democrat senator from New York, very close to President Nixon. They were both intellectuals. And one of the things that Senator Moynihan told President Nixon when he became president was that the executive branch needed a wholesale reform, literally tearing it up root and branch every 30 to 40 years. And he said, look, we did it after World War II. We created the National Security Council after the war. We created the CIA after the war. But if you allow it to go on too long without reform, the corruption will become so deeply entrenched, you won't be able to fix it. And here we are nearly, what, 60 years after that, that last reform, 65 years. And so the corruption, just as Moynihan warned, is so deep and it's in every government institution. And now, of course, it's spread to the culture, Hollywood, movies, television, music. It's spread to big tech. It's spread to right. academia. It is spread to the churches in many cases. So the, the corruption now is so deep that it is gonna take a Herculean effort to uproot all of this and beat it back and try to defeat it. And to my mind, there is only one person who has stood up to all of these forces, taken all of the incoming and is still standing, which is a miracle from God, and that's Donald J. Trump. I gotta stand up for truth. Now, I, I'm gonna go out on a limb here at, at the risk of being misunderstood, okay? If Trump did something really, really bad and wrong, then we would not just support him blindly because, you know, he, he's he's our guy. That's not the point here. There, there's something much more sinister at play here. What he is being taken to task for is way deeper, uh, is, is not at all what he's being uh, accused of. But how do we deal with this? Let me go to you, Dutch. How do we deal with what was happening here when we're looking for truth and it's so difficult to find the truth? Well, I think those who are <clears throat> those who are in government and, and who work with with, the, with President Trump and and his team and those that have the ability to speak into the common stream of, of the nation must do that. But I would also say, and that's an important part of it, as, as Monica and others do uh, with the voice God has given them. But the church, we must also keep in the forefront of our thinking: this is a spiritual war. This is not just about a man. It's about the soul of a nation. It's about a people, a group of people that want control and they do not want America to be the America that God raised up. They want a different America. And so behind all of this is a spiritual war. The first thing said about Satan in scripture, Genesis 3.1, the first thing said, and that's an important law in scripture, is that he was, the serpent was more crafty or cunning than any of the other creatures in the garden. That word cunning, arum, means smooth, bare. We get the concept of a slick operator from that very word. He is far more dangerous to us in his craftiness than he is as a roaring lion. And so what God has been doing, and we have to, we have to 
recognize it, and then we have to pray into it. But what God is doing is bit by bit, he's making the enemy expose himself. These people have become so overconfident. They have become so angry. They are so filled with hate. These are some of the things that cause those trying to stay in hiding to come out of hiding. It's like the mob with Stephen listening to him preach. And finally, he said some things that so angered them, they put their fingers in their ears and they gnashed with their teeth and they killed him because that level of anger brings out what's in them. And that's what we see in America right now. They don't care if we know what they're doing and who they are. They're going to do it anyway, but that's good because God is exposing. And what do we as a church do? We pray and we release the word of the Lord and we make our decrees and we pray for God's kingdom to come and his will be done. And it's our prayers that will give strength to the movement. It's our prayers that will keep these false attacks from taking this man out. We have to do that. We can do that. Right. We are doing it and we're going to keep on doing it. You bet. You bet we are going to keep on doing it. These people have the media on their side and they don't need to tell the truth, Gene. We know that. They don't tell the truth, but they don't care we know. You know, True. Monica said, right, she said, we're in a pivotal moment when you have corruption and yet you have a press that won't uh, expose or release that, then then it's, it's, double, it's double trouble and that's where we are. So, you know, they know they're working so hard right now and they lie so much and they attack him so much because they know that if they lose the White House and Congress in a, in a year and a half, it's over for them. There are there are the exposure will 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 multiply many times over. And I believe indictments, et cetera. So that but they also know if they could have four more years, they could completely accomplish everything they want. So they go after it. They 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 speak out of both sides of their mouth. We know that. I, we shouldn't be surprised anymore. That's why we just say, "Come on, God, just keep exposing. Let them keep lying. Let them keep pulling this these acts that we know are crooked and expose it." Because the American people, slowly but surely, even without the mainstream media, the American people are catching on. They see this corruption. They see the double standard. They see the lies. And God is doing what we've asked him to do. The White House says they're our kids. Watch. These are our kids. These are our neighbors. Not somebody else's kids. They're all our kids. And our children are the kite strings that hold our national ambitions aloft. It matters a great deal how we treat everyone in this country. LGBTQ Americans, especially children, you're loved, you're heard, and this administration has your back. All right, so you heard there, that's uh, uh, Joe Biden. Now look at what Elon Musk had to say in his tweet about that. They are not your kids. You are the government, they're not your kids. Uh, Dutch, you, you see this? I, I don't know anybody who has had a child that says it's our neighborhood's child to raise. No, no, you, you, if you love your kids. You're going to raise them the right way. And you want to make sure because you don't trust anybody to raise them. Uh, although a lot of us did trust the public school system when we shouldn't have. Uh, but this is the, this is where the nation is at with a, a, a president that really does. I think he, I don't know if he knows what he believes, but they're using him to propagate this message that it's uh, it's really Marxism. This is socialism, communism, all them isms rolled up into one, Dutch. This is what we're dealing with. Well, yeah, and again, this is what happens when the exposure comes. Right. We, can, we are seeing what they're all about now. They make no bones about it. They're taking the kids. You know, they say things like, no, you don't have a right to know what we're teaching. You don't, you, you don't have a right to have a voice in what we teach. In fact, if you come and say that in, in one of the school board meetings, we call you terrorists. They have come completely out of the closet and are and have said, we're going after your kids. And and yet I want to say to people the, the we are seeing this. And as we do what we do, we pray. You pray on this program. The ministry you represent pray tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, probably millions are praying now every day. And it works. And Jeremiah said, God said, I'm the Lord of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Job 
uh, 36, 32 says, God fills his hands with the lightning and commands it to strike the mark. Well, the word strike the mark, there is the Hebrew word for intercession. God, when he says, he says, lightning striking a tree is a picture of the power you have in intercession. Your prayers strike the mark. And I just want to, I want to give people hope right now and say, Hey, we're going to win this. God, God is, is the one backing us and our prayers are like missiles. They're like lightning bolts and we will prevail because as Mark said, our God wins. Our Jesus took all authority. We represent him, not ourselves. So we're going to win this battle and they're not getting the kids, Gene. A no, revival is coming to the youth and the children of America. A revival is coming to the schools and nobody's going to keep it out of there. It is coming to the youth and children of America and it will not be stopped. Amen. Amen. John, lead us in a prayer and pray for those people that are watching right now. Lord, you, you, you speak of hope deferred and you say it gives us heart disease. It makes our heart sick or weary. When a person has heart disease, they can't run. They can no longer run the race. They can't even live life as it was intended. And the same thing happens spiritually. But Lord, you also speak of our anchor that holds the anchor of hope, and it is Jesus, a person. Our hope is in Him. It's not in a political organization. It's not in a person. And so, Lord, we refuse to allow that political spirit that would put its hope in a system to take hold of us. We believe in government as you established it and that you are the God of government. So we ask you right now, as we speak, let the power of Holy Spirit go forth to people watching this and not watching it and heal them of hope deferred, discouragement, disillusionment, yes. cynicism. Yes. We ask for the spirit of faith to rise up in them again. Yes. We say rise up in, in the Lord your God. Stir up the faith that's inside of you, as Paul told Thank Timothy you. to do. He said, I know it's in you, Timothy. Now stir it up. And we say we are a stirring up force right now. And we ask you, Lord, awaken that resurrection life. Go into the people of God right now and let faith arise, let determination arise. We break that spirit of fear and hopelessness off of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.